No, Emily, will you start the applause? Spread that around the room! Welcome to the stage! Harry Ryan! Just come from work, by the way. I'm not straight. <laughs> As a gay man with autism, do you like big butts? Cannot lie. <laughs> I was diagnosed when I was little, and I've always been very literal-minded. I remember being six years old and refusing to drink 7-Up, because I wasn't. <laughs> later, I went on to university, and later in life, not straight after the 7-Up. <laughs> and when I was there, I got a brilliant email from someone on the welfare team that said, to all those with autism, Asperger's syndrome and other autism spectrum disorders. Please come to a meetup on Wednesday and make new friends. Ah. Remember thinking. <laughs> Did you send that, mate? <laughs> Been looking for that bastard for years. <laughs> what a time to show up. I remember reading it right and thinking, that's a great idea. Let's put a group of people who famously don't like new situations and unfamiliar environments in a huge room with 25 to 50 strangers. <laughs> I went to this and I was the only person there. <laughs> I can only assume everybody else was driven away by the inaccuracy of the number range 25 to 50. If we're going to try and get autistic people to socialise, at least give us some prime numbers to be going on with. <laughs> I've asked what it's like being me, though, and I'd say, I'm so autistic, my to-do list just says, make more lists. <laughs> but then I did a charity gig recently for the National Autistic Society, and there was a lot of autistic people in the crowd as well, and people with other disabilities, and everybody's been given a sticker to wear saying, I do, slash, I don't wish to be interacted with. I thought, good grief, all these guide dogs get to wear a sign saying, please don't touch me, I'm working. <laughs> but this bloke came up afterwards, and he said, Oh, you don't look very autistic, mate. You must be quite mild. I'm not a corner. <laughs> also, Dad, you were present at my diagnosis. <laughs> um, with my autism, I find it hard to fit in places. Um, I don't really get a lot of the sort of social chit-chat and banter at work. I found out this girl I work with is 18, and she'd never heard of Easter. Like... <laughs> Weirdly enough, I did see her eating a cream egg. <laughs> but, like, she wasn't from a religion that doesn't celebrate it. She'd just never properly been taught the Easter story growing up. And so I said to her, I'll think of her like Craig David. You know, met a girl on Monday, took her for a drink on Tuesday, nailed to the cross on Friday, <laughs> and arose on Sunday. But she was too young to have heard of Seven Days by Craig David. <laughs> Craig David was a hero of mine growing up, but he's really let me down. I read in the paper that he's a Tory. Right, now that's not my views, but Will Young's still Labour. And I think it's not so bad when one of your first two wanks still shares your politics ten years on. <laughs> Every gig, rooms full of straight men laughing at that, don't know why. <laughs> I was dating someone recently, a trans boy, a transgender boy, and now, you know, I'd never want to do anything, you know, remotely transphobic or hurtful or, you know, hurt anyone. Um, but he, he wanted to make a relationship sexual. Now, I've never, I've never been with anyone, like, without a dick before. So I said this, he said, I don't need to worry. Goes into his pants drawer and gets out a plastic penis. Funny that, because I try to keep mine as well. <laughs> you know, and he puts it on and sort of, we start doing what we do. This is, um, this is what gay sex looks like, by the way, if you're not familiar with it. Um, <laughs> you know, like... You know, like... You know, like the one white guy in every 90s rap video? That's what we do in the bedroom. <laughs> so they start doing what we do, you know, and then I'm, I'm, you know, I feel I'm sort of invested in it now. I can't, I can't, you know, I, I've gone too far. I'm sort of invested in it. I'm sort of, I'm, I'm bent over. I'm kind of trying to take it up, like, onto my... It is disgusting. It's a horrible flavour. There's no two ways around it. And, like, at one point he says, like, I'm sort of foaming at both sides of his mouth like a fitting dog. And then he, he sees this as, like, being turned on by this, and he goes, oh, am I too big for you, babe? Am I too big for you? I was like, girl, no, you just taste of polyurethane. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen a plastic penis, you know, in the wild, but it doesn't, it doesn't 
quite work for me. You know, the whole point of it, of a penis, is, you know, it's a beautiful bodily thing. It starts soft, it gets hard. It's, well, it's one size fits all. There's no narrative arc, is there? <laughs> There's no storyline. It's like starting at the series finale and working backwards to episode one. Not that I would ever watch a series out of sequence, but so I'm informed. <laughs> But then when you've been on your own too long, um, you sort of feel like the world's conspiring to keep you that way. And I was seeing this lad in Brighton for a while, and I went down on the train to pay him a visit, and the ticket collector came round, looked at my ticket, and said, any time day single. But yes, I know! <laughs> Don't do that to people. <laughs> but um, that came to an end, right? Because we, we met on, um, on Grindr initially, on the old Grindr. Um, don't know if you're familiar with it. Um, if you... Now, if you haven't been on this, on these things, you have to write a little bit about yourself, you know, fill your bio in a bit about sort of who you are, what you're looking for. So I filled mine in and put no Tories, obviously, if you've got to. <laughs> and this one guy messaged and he said, I am right wing, but I've got a big cock. You've got a choice to make. <laughs> <laughs> right, so I said the only thing I could say when someone sends that to you, prove it. So he sent me a photo of him holding his Conservative Party membership card. <laughs> Not great when that's your MP. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm living in a sort of nicer bit of London now, and I lived in Lewisham before. Now, it had a reputation as a bit of a rough area, and it was in some ways. When I was there, I saw this road man going down the road on his phone, and he went, Yeah, 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 she's a real classy bird. Like, she brushes her teeth and that. <laughs> And then he went on and he went, I know, man, every day. <laughs> and that was also my local MP at that time. <laughs> but I, and look, before I go, something that's commonly known about autistic people like myself is um, we sort of struggle with sort of big, busy, big, busy, noisy situations like this, lots of cheering people. And um, <laughs> um, it's something we find difficult with a sensory input. Um, and so I thought I, I'd like to end my sets in a moment of calm. So if I could ask you all to put your hands together and close your eyes for me. Um, this is a non-denominational prayer, so it doesn't matter if you don't believe in homosexuals. <laughs> um, as we move into the end of the first quartile of 2020, please allow yourselves to end your prayers autistically suitably and grammatically correctly with either a man or some men. <laughs> Thanks very much. It's been a great night.